and good morning everybody we are here again at euro car parts um obviously we got to pick up parts we are running late i think i might have double booked myself but you know we live just go and collect the parts you're all right kev good morning first one is mike foxtrot five six Boy. look at this traffic man what is this i'm running late Right, good morning everyone. So we were at the first job, um, but it turned out it wasn't just the belt that he needed. He actually needed his alternator as well. That's the reason why it was squeaking and it snapped as well, because the alternator was seized. So we're going to go back there later anyway to sort it out for the guy. For now, we have to do a full service on my mate's car. This is a VW Sirocco. He actually kind of bought it off of us. This engine was built, rebuilt by us so yeah it's it's been running well how many miles has it done since 20 it's, well, yeah, 20. yeah. It's, he's done a 20k already and it's uh, still going strong however it has developed a leak a coolant leak that goes to the heater matrix that will need to be replaced and um, it's a brittle plastic now so yeah we're gonna have to replace that but for now we're gonna perform a service on this last year we replaced all of the filters and obviously the oil and stuff like that the spark plugs was also replaced so this time around we're not going to be replacing the spark plugs we're only going to be replacing the oil and the filters anyway we'll run a time lapse and show you how we do things let's just say Right, so we have just done the inspection on this, uh, on the exterior anyway. I know this car like the back of my hand. We are the ones that takes care of this car. Every single time needs service repair and stuff. It's on very good condition, let's just say, except for this leak over here. That is really bad. You can see that even though it's sitting, it's still leaking some. Anyway, coolant leak as well as you can see. That's coming from the heater matrix hose going into the inside. That will also needs to be rectified. It's time to change the fluids. John has just replaced the air filter. I believe you can see right here. Look, it's, uh, it's, it's a little bit dirty now. Yeah, and as uh, like what I said, we don't use bad filters un unless obviously the customer asks. Look, man filter, everything man filter. You guys get it. We don't use bad stuff. Some people will say, oh, it's okay. It's only doing this, that. And no, 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 mate. No, it's not. It's not the same. Trust me. It's not the same. Anyway, uh, let's get moving. Let's replace the oil and all of the. <laughs> what, Tommy? Right, so we're all done with my mate Sirocco now. I'm not going to show you, obviously, all the things that we do in this video but yeah we do a lot of checks and stuff for the time being obviously i showed you like putting oil in and stuff like that just the basic checks but more on that on another video how we perform checks and what we check anyway but yeah all done we're gonna move on to the next job so we're just gonna drop this now and go to i think harrow let's get going Right, change of scenery again. We are now on this Mercedes-Benz. So servicing for this one, it's uh, due for a B8 service, I believe. So that's going to be your cabin filter, oil and oil filter. But yeah, this customer, we've had him for about two years now, I think, or three years. I can't remember, but yeah, we always service his vehicle and it's just gone through the MOT and it was perfectly fine, apparently. But I will also do my own inspection anyway, because that's part of the B8 service, so. Yeah, top up all the fluids, check the fluids and stuff like that and the rest of the inspection stuff really. It's a bit of a non-exciting jobs today, let's see. But if we find anything exciting, then we'll definitely let you know. And you know me guys, 
I've already said in the previous one, I don't like using crappy oil and filters and stuff like that. But regardless, if you do use crappy oil, but you service it often, this is what your engine would look like. It would look clean and it would look like that pretty much. It doesn't look tarnished, you know, when it, it looks a bit like golden. And that's because high quality oil have detergents in them to clean them and stuff like that. So Shell, Oil, Liquid Molly, all those big brands basically, they have their own proprietary uh, formula, let's just say in their stuff that's why i always recommend those big brands but you know i mean if you service your car often this is what your engine will look like it will look clean and it will probably give you less of a hard time let's just say so yeah let's get started let's get this serviced yeah before i start going underneath i just want to show you guys that i do have knee pads in my trousers it's about this thick let's just say that's why you can see it right there it looks square as anything because there is a knee pad in there look. so yeah thank you for telling me anyway to wear knee pads and stuff but yeah it's convenient that my trousers actually contains a knee pad let's just say the next thing to do is probably get a mask let's just say with the when changing brake pads and clutch i mean yeah it's health and safety hazard but it's not like the old days anyway for those material or clutch material and also the brake material to be containing asbestos it's, it's not like that anymore but you know regardless you're still inhaling particles that's not even meant to be inhaled so it is a good idea thank you very much guys for telling me that but yeah let's let's go underneath and uh start removing 100 different bolts and screws for the underside of this mercedes <laughs> Right, whilst we're waiting for that to drain, what I'm gonna do for when we're doing the next one anyway, um, when we do a full service next time, I think I'm gonna wear the uh, the headgear for this GoPro so that you can see what I check and stuff like that. Um, it's like it's like a pre-MOT check, so we check all the ball joints, we check the bushes, tires, the threads, etc., etc., all those brakes, suspension, whatever. But yeah, it's just um, obviously to give your customer peace of mind let's just say for when you do servicing um with this one it's just had this mot no advisories on it whatsoever so i did check the crucial stuff such as obviously your brakes tires the suspension checked all of those just to make sure that it is actually what they said it was on the mot test paper because i know there are some scumbags out there that does not perform mot the proper way or sometimes they don't even see the car and they do mot so yeah it's just um it's just a good idea really to be double checking the work let's just say anyway that's draining now you can see right there nice nice and black <laughs> yeah it's a diesel obviously it's going to be black so john is currently performing a backflip <laughs> right here look <laughs> hello mate oh hello how are you mate how are you doing down there mate trying to the cab filter lads <laughs> Oh! That is gonna fall in your eyes and you don't even have PPE. All of the stuff, all of the bird poop, all No, sorts. it's already out, mate. Oh, you've taken it out already? Yeah. Where is it? Oh, where is it? Oh, where is it? Oh, oh. oh there where it is. is. Ah. Ah, but yeah, there we go. Look, as you can see, we did this last time as well. Uh, Bosch stuff. This one we is do man, not. Though. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Man is really good anyway. But yeah, we don't cheap out on parts just to make sure that our customer is happy. Using good parts basically reduces the chance of your customer complaining back to you saying, hey, look at this, why is it doing this, why is it doing... I've had enough of that. I've had enough of using cheap stuff and having to go back there, you know? It's only a few pennies difference anyway. So why don't we just put the good stuff in there and have the peace of mind that the customer will not come back to you and say you've done a crappy job. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's always a good practice anyway to be using those good, good stuff. So just waiting for the oil to drain. It's getting boring. Hopefully the uh, alternator is somewhat exciting anyway. So 30 newton meters. Boom. Sorry, yeah. I'm 
bisa ada lucu <laughs> Right, so we have to make sure that every time we replace all the seals So that's three seals, so the one on the cap And also the two little ones Let's Give it a good clean as well of course Oh you gotta use this fresh one man oh. You dropped it in In comes the small one and then in comes the smallest one Fresh avocado Free shabaka do. <laughs> hey, there she goes. Right, so now we are going to be resetting it now that the oil filter and oil and cabin filter has been uh, replaced. We are now going to be resetting the service interval through there. Right. Go, we'll reset the Merc says Benz. Yeah, so B8 it is. You don't really have to do it through the computer, but I just find it easier anyway. So it seems like, yeah, we cannot reset through the computer, so we're gonna have to do it manually. Um, let me just press back all the way back. So this is how to do it anyway. My auto here actually shows me how to do it. So. It's just this until you get to the trip, press the call and then the OK button, not at the same time, but press this first and then that after straight away, like within one second and the menu should come up. So one sec, let's go through that. So trip, call and press OK, hold it for about five seconds. There you go. Assist plus will come up, press OK, full service and then you go all the way down, confirm service. We use 22931, service carried out, yes cannot be undone press confirm and full service completed that's it boom and we are done here we actually managed to pull one more job which is a I believe it's a dog bone mount replacement for a Vauxhall Corsa but we'll check on that but first we have to go to the alternator job that we were at this morning the one that he thought it was a belt but it wasn't it's actually the alternator belt so yeah all done with this Mercedes now let's get going on to the next job all right so here we are again at GSF hello Aaron let's walk in hello can I please have the auto? Hello. Hello, Sam. Oh, mate, how's it going? Yeah, not bad, mate. How's it going? I'm okay, I'm okay. Good, good. Is, did my part arrive yet? Is it there yet? It's an alternator. Yeah. Please tell me it's arrived. Yeah, yeah, it's in stock, mate. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, I could actually live stream as well. You know, I might do that at one point mm -hmm. when we're doing clutch. Just, yeah, like, uh, what's it on Insta, Facebook, TikTok? TikTok Live just has been yeah. doing a clutch. Yeah. Boom. That'll be loud, isn't it? That'll be good. Nice one, mate. Thank you. Same Cheers. Time. In a bit. Oh. Open the side, mate. Come on. It's all open the side. Why are you slacking, bro? Oh. Oh, ah! Get off me. Slacking. Let's go. Next job. Ah, uh, now we're here. So. This is a Peugeot 107, I believe. As you can see, oh, he actually took it away, but yeah, the belt was, it wasn't complete. Let's just say it was snapped. So you can see right here, this alternator, I don't know, you can just about see it, doesn't really spin anymore. Yeah, that's a sign that it's seizing in place, but you'll see it anyway later once we've taken it out. That's the reason why his belt snapped, probably overheated and caused it to snap because of this alternator here it's just there's a point where it just stops basically so it gets tight and then as soon as you put pressure on it it just gets really really tight so yeah let's get that replaced and we'll show you what it looks like compared to the other one yeah first thing that we need to do is to obviously just disconnect the battery one terminal should be okay good practice would be to disconnect the 
the earth but this one's got an easy disconnect on the positive side so let's just put this to the side for now sorry then I, I thought I'd press the record button first thing to remove would be the heat shield for the exhaust manifold remove the bolt here and the one right over there if you can see where my finger is it's over there I had to use a 16 what's my 16 spanner oh 16 spanner is all the way down there but yeah there's two bolts on each side that bolt at the very bottom needs to be removed same with this one and you can see the other one down at the bottom there so yeah let's 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 keep moving i've got bigger hands so we've got to give it to the other guy it's very difficult for me to reach around the back but it seems like he's are you doing it yeah. are you sure yeah. okay all right so he's doing it now oh I'm he's taking watch. it out i think john getting involved the game <laughs> so are you actually good. managing to undo it yeah Nice, nice, nice. A lot. Yeah, I'm having difficult times, mate. Down there. Got a massive forearm. Same. <laughs> well, the huge. <laughs> Have a look at this. We had to play a little bit of Tetris. But it came out. Have a look. Have a listen. And also, look at that. So that is a sign of swelling. So something inside swell up and obviously cause this to look not pretty really rotate compared to the new one look at that look at that and then compare it to this it just stops compare it to this one there you go look at this so yeah let's get this one replaced get that one returned new belt new everything not everything you know the alternator and that <laughs> Huge carpet slip. Right, so that is us done with this Peugeot now. Just a little tip as well when you're working with stuff like this where it's really tight here and you can't get to the alternator and stuff like that. A lot of times if you watch this video over here, there was another Peugeot, Citroen or something like that, same stuff as this anyway. What I usually do is if I can't obviously access it a lot of times people would remove the front bumper and then they can work on the alternator and stuff so this is what i do i just remove the mount obviously support the underneath remove the mount and just push the engine back and that should give you the space that you need except for the new perjos i believe the new perjos are a pain because the bolts are actually at the front and you've got like a tiny little tolerance i don't know why they do it like that man it's really annoying but you know we pulled through and uh, managed to get this done in about 45 minutes so yeah happy days all that's left to do now is to basically turn it on and see if it's going to squeak or not and i know it won't but we'll try it anyway oh and there's no battery oh my lord okay oh, hey Good days. Check engine light. Nice. Nice. Good go. Right. Okay. So that's that job well done yet again. Customer is happy with his car, and he's actually off to Manchester now. He can finally use his car after two weeks of being able to use it. So next one, I believe he said that he needs a dog bone mount or a mount of some sort. It's a Vauxhall Corsa, so we'll go and check it out. Let's go. Traffic. Right, so we have just uh, diagnosed this Vauxhall Corsa right here. Look at this. Dog bone mount is healthy, but the bracket on the other hand snapped. As you can see right there, it's sheared off. He said that he had the clutch done two months ago. Something like that. Yeah. Now it um, basically did. Why are you looking at me? Tasting. Anyway, yeah, it started clunking, he said, and they just ignored it. Uh, it seems like uh, a young fella, anyway. So he just ignored it, thinking that it was normal, blast the music, whatever they had to do. And yeah, over time, I reckon what happened is I can only speculate again because I, I, I did not find the bolt that was sitting here at the bottom, which means that he pro they probably tightened it. And it's it's not tiny. It was probably loose because it's one of them ones. 
that you actually like keep loose until everything else is tight so he probably didn't tighten it and then over time it was just going like this whenever he's changing gear so it's just going like that and eventually snapped what happened there and now we have to replace this we're gonna be back here in about three to four days time we'll end the video here thank you very much for watching please like comment share and subscribe and we will see you on the next one peace hello <laughs> hello mate oh hello how are you mate what are you doing down there mate try to the cabin filter lads <laughs> oh <laughs> no.